Hey, everyone. Welcome to the latest installment of our ongoing editorial webinar series, Coffee Talk. Each hour-long, information-packed episode organized by the hardworking folks at Redmond Magazine features the observations and insights of an independent expert on a wide range of tech industry topics. Many thanks to the underwriting sponsor of this episode, Zscaler, provider of the world's most widely deployed zero trust network access platform. Without their support, this series would not be possible. And thanks to you for joining us. I'm John K. Waters, Editor-in-Chief of the Converge 360 Group of 1105 Media, and I'll be your moderator. Today's topic is the case for cloud firewalls, why you need one today. And our main presenter is technologist, creator of compelling content, and senior resultant Howard M. Cohen. But before we get started, just a bit of housekeeping. This episode is being recorded for later access. Keep an eye out for an email with a link to that recording. It will be coming your way in the next few days. We'll make some time during the talk for questions. Please feel free to type your questions into the Q&A box at any time. Our sponsors provided some extra resources you won't want to miss. They're available now on your console. And as a small thank you to the first 200 attendees who stick with us to the end, we will be sending you a $5 gift certificate to Starbucks. It's a cup of joe to go with the info. Now let's meet our first speaker. Howard M. Cohen, technologist, creative, compelling content, and senior resultant, has spent more than 40 years in the IT industry. During that time, he has held senior executive positions in many of the top channel partner organizations, and he currently writes for and about IT and the IT channel. He is a sought after speaker, an insightful observer of the technology landscape, and one of our favorite presenters. You're in for a great session. Take it away, Howard. Thank you very much, John. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today for this conversation about cloud firewalls, why you want one now. Uh, as John said, I am a, compel a creator of compelling content. If you'd like to sample that content, scan the QR code at the bottom or go to the Business Technologist Journal on Substack. Okay, let's get started. Those of you who have been with me before know that I always like to start each presentation with a word of the day. Today's word is a little bit unusual, and I am positive that none of you have guessed it. Uh, that word is mother. Now, obviously, this old bearded gentleman is not anybody's mother. Uh, as a matter of fact, that happens to be Plato. Uh, amongst many other things that Plato taught us, he taught us that necessity is the mother of invention. Necessity is the mother of invention, one of... Uh, my favorite, my favorite sayings. Okay, so necessity being the mother of invention, how does that apply to cloud firewalls? Let's uh, take a look. So on a given day, the world was spinning happily around and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, something hit. And what it was, was a global pandemic. Did I mention that this day was March 20th, 2020? Uh, yes, the global pandemic, the COVID-19 novel coronavirus hit us and basically brought the entire world to a stop. Um, everybody had to stop working. Everybody was instructed to go home, get away from each other so that you don't keep on infecting each other and the virus doesn't have a chance to spread any further. Um, problem of course was that sending everybody home didn't mean we could all just stop doing business. Uh, commerce had to continue. And so we had to find a way to enable everybody to work from home. Uh, this gave rise to a global digital transformation that we underwent at that time. And we actually underwent that global digital transformation instantly, instantly. As soon as everybody got home, we were setting them up to connect to the network, connect to us and keep working together, connect to each other, uh, all kinds of amazing, very nearly miraculous things took place that day or those days. And now here we were, everybody working from home, a lot has changed. One of the most profound changes was the change in our threat surface. That is what it is we had to protect in terms of our data and our network. Now, what you're looking at is an office building, actually two office buildings. Uh, looking at just one of them, that was our original threat surface, pretty much. 
if we occupied that entire building, that was it. We were protecting that. And it was pretty easy because everybody was all in the same place, you know, and, you know, it was pretty self-contained. And then when the coronavirus hit, that changed to look more like this. And all over that map of lower Manhattan and Brooklyn and New Jersey um, are people living in their homes and working from there. And those homes, each of the little teeny homes that you see out there, is part of somebody's threat surface that it wasn't yesterday. So we had to figure out, well, what are we going to do about that? How are we going to protect them? They're part of our threat surface now. And how do we protect all that? Well, let's take a look at what a typical node came to look like. Um, a typical user node came to look like this, somebody's house. And if it's like most houses, it's equipped with residential quality internet access. Okay. And if they're really smart and really careful and diligent, they have themselves a residential quality firewall protecting themselves. Good thing to do, good digital hygiene. Unfortunately, if they are now using your network and accessing your data, eh, that residential firewall isn't gonna cut it. You know, you need something a little bit stronger. And maybe, it may be that that residential internet access eh, may not be enough for you. So there were things we're going to have to do to get these people working. You know, one option was to go out and buy a, an industrial strength firewall for every one of our people's homes. Now, if you have five users, uh, it's possible. If you have 50, ugh, that's a big budget chunk. If you have 500, you're blowing the budget. And if you have 5,000 or more, you know, it's ridiculous. It's a, an incredible investment, not the least of which to say you couldn't deploy it in time. It would take a couple of days at the very least so to get it there, configure it. Who's going to do all that? And then you have to manage it. And you need industrial strength internet access for it. This was problematic. Still, we were challenged to figure out how to get everybody working from home. Well, okay. So let's talk tech for a few minutes. Here's the, the, the technical perspective on what our challenge was. In the beginning, we had a local area network. It ran throughout our building. Everybody was connected to it. Uh, our users each sat at their station accessing the network and getting authorized and authenticated. Uh, and they accessed file servers, application servers, uh, printers, uh, other perif peripherals, they messaged each other, were all kinds of things they could do. And at a given point in time, some 28 years ago now, we all encountered the internet. Well, we certainly wanted to use that. All these wonderful resources all over the world, a network so large, so complex, that there's really no way to diagram it. And so the first guy who tried drew a blob. And somebody in the audience said, ooh, that blob kind of looks like a cloud. Actually, they said, oh, a cloud. And it got named. Um, OK, so we have a cloud full of all kinds of servers and services and whatnot. We want to connect to it. However, we realize there are bad guys lurking out there. Amongst all the good guys, there are some bad guys who are going to try to send really nasty stuff into our network stuff we have to protect our users against. Prurient content, viruses, worms, and Trojans, all other kinds of malware, and attacks to try and get at our stuff. So we're going to have to protect ourselves. Also, our own users might try to send the wrong stuff out across that internet if we let them. So what did we do? We went out and we bought ourselves a hardware firewall, an appliance. We installed it in the building, and it filtered everything out. Not everything. It filtered out everything but the stuff we wanted to have come through. We had control over that by, by putting in rules that said, this can pass, this can't. Now, you may not know it, but the very first firewall introduced actually in the 1970s was called the, the Gauntlet. And it came to us from a company called Trusted Information Systems. Good name. 
Uh, trusted information systems, the inventors of the crystal uh, toolkit and the gauntlet firewall, very uh, important company in the development of our technologies today, had a very simple watch phrase. And that was that which is not um, specifically permitted is strictly forbidden. That which is not specifically permitted is strictly forbidden. So basically you close the door to everything and then you open up doors to certain things that you wanna let through in either direction, ingress or egress. And that rule has basically survived to this day. We basically do it that way now. So, okay, the hardware firewall was working. It was a great solution. Then of course we hit March 20th and what was the impact of March 20th on this diagram? The post-pandemic challenges had our users showing up, connecting across the internet. They were out there somewhere on the internet, connecting in through the firewall. And you see people were leaving our place, then fewer users. In fact, some companies had no users in the building anymore. They emptied the building out completely. But now here's the problem. That firewall is still protecting the land on which there's almost nobody. Everybody is on the other side where they're not protected. They're outside the firewall. So we have ourselves a problem. How are we gonna protect all of those users sitting outside the firewall? Get rid of the hardware firewall and we replace it with a cloud firewall. What? is a cloud firewall. Okay, what is a cloud firewall? First of all, Gartner, of course, has cloud firewall in its Gartner glossary. And there they tell us, any day now, uh, there we go, um, that cloud network firewalls offer bi-directional stateful traffic inspection of both egress of data and ingress of data and it's used to secure applications in different types of public clouds. Now, there's several ways in which they can be deployed, either from the cloud infrastructure vendor across their cloud, from their cloud. It could be a separate virtual instance, or it could be in, a contain in containers. Um, multiple ways to deliver the cloud firewall, but here's the point. All of them basically are cloud-based. Okay, so, the cloud firewall is software-based, running in the cloud. It's hosted in the cloud and deployed from the cloud. Functionally, what a cloud firewall does very simply is to create a virtual barrier. Rather than that hardware barrier that we had, it creates a virtual barrier around all your endpoints, all your applications, all your workloads, and all your users. Everybody is protected by the cloud firewall wherever they are, wherever they are. Now, let's think about that for a second. The advantages of a cloud firewall, well, they're really pretty simple. First and foremost, it detects and prevents threats. That's what we want a firewall to do. We want it to detect them before it reaches us and prevent them from reaching us. And that is exactly what a cloud firewall is meant to do. It protects, mitigates, or completely stops anybody who's not authorized from accessing our private network across the internet. They can't do it. They can't make contact with us because it's preventing them from doing so. Um, we talked about how there are bad guys out there sending malicious traffic. It filters that out, just like a firewall. It filters out malicious network traffic. It also has another side benefit that it makes it easier for us to segment our networks. And there's a lot of talk these days about segmenting the network because it makes it easier to protect a smaller segment than it is to try to address in protecting the entire thing all at once. And many people are adopting a segmented strategy rather than going at it, you know, wholesale. The other thing that it does that's really kind of useful is it provides much more extensive logging than even we're accustomed to. This supports compliance auditing. It supports compliance management as well as security management. 
And it gives us the ability to really deeply analyze what's going on in our network that we really need to be aware of so we can become prescriptive and we can get in front of many of these possible problems. Okay, so those are the advantages of using a cloud firewall. If you take all of this together, what it's saying is that it's firewalls for everybody, centrally managed, centrally controlled. Now, <laughs> that has a lot of ramifications. Here are some of the benefits, if you will, of using a cloud firewall. I decided to go with this one first because I think it's the most important thing. And that is that it accelerates and improves your user's experience. Because when you improve the user's experience, you are halfway there to improving your customer's experiences. Happy, happy users, happy employees tend to generate much happier customers. Happier customers generate more revenue. It's all good news. So the first and foremost thing is that it accelerates and improves how the users work on the network. It lifts some of the burden from them. They don't have to worry about managing or administering a firewall. Nobody does. There is nobody who has to go running out to adjust their firewall. It's adjusted from your central control, which is really the, the cloud provider's console. Okay. Another thing it does, and I just kind of alluded to it, it reduces administrative overhead. So rather than having somebody who has to go to every firewall, every console, one by one, and make changes, you're doing it once. You're doing it once on one console, and it impacts everybody who's protected by that cloud firewall. Now, think of this for a moment. Instead of thinking about it in the context of remote users sent home by the COVID pandemic, think of this in terms of branch offices. Those of you who have branch offices, this means that you no longer have to put a firewall, a hardware firewall, an appliance in each office. Okay, so you don't have to make a capital investment in a firewall for each office. That's good. Even better, you don't have to station somebody at each office who can manage that thing and take care of it because it's centrally managed through the cloud. Okay, so that's a, another really good thing. Your expense in operating all of your branch offices has just been cut. It's just been reduced substantially. Uh, the same thing goes for remote users. If you have people working from home, working from a hotel, working from an airport, working from a sports stadium, kind of the time, they say, time to say that, um, wherever they're working from. And even if they're hybrid, even if they're working part-time in the office, and part-time from home, you can protect them wherever they are because it's completely under software control. There's no hardware involved that would have to be moved somehow to accommodate them. Now, this also has the impact of making the whole thing much easier to scale. Remember we talked before about having five users, 50 users, 500 users, 5,000, 50,000. Well, that kind of growth has happened in businesses. Many of you probably have had experience in a company that's growing and you have to figure out how to scale all your solutions. One of the easiest solutions to scale is a cloud firewall because again, it's all software based and it's all hosted from the cloud. So you don't have to install anything physically. You don't have to configure anything physically everything gets done from a central console. Also, if you're embracing new technologies, if you're embracing, let's say that you acquire a company and you're adding all of their users, you're building new branch office locations, whichever way you're extending the scope of your business, your cloud firewall can extend with you sim by simple software actions. So that's a powerful, powerful um, new functionality that's a benefit of using cloud firewalls. Here's one that probably every one of you can identify with, updates. We, we've all been victims of Patch Tuesday, right? 
we've all faced that day when all the patches came out and some of them broke stuff. Others just didn't fully apply it properly. Some didn't apply at all. We've had so, uh, security updates and application updates, and we have to we have to ship those out to the field, to all of the different stations, to all the different branches. Um, it's painful. It went back when we used to do it physically, it was expensive to send people all over the place. When we got to automating that, it got better, but still, it was very error prone. Now, the updates happen as with any other cloud centralized application. They happen at the cloud center, the cloud data center. Um, they, they happen in the core. And therefore, all of the connected stations get them. They get the updates automatically with no intervention by you. There may be intervention by your IT department, which may decide not to apply certain patches because they'll break other things. That's a practice that's been around for decades and will probably continue to be around for some time to come. But bottom line, for every anybody who's ever had that headache in the morning when you come in and everything has changed, it'll still be changed, but it will have been changed correctly. It'll be, been changed centrally. And the worst case is if you've got a problem, uh, everybody's got that problem. Okay, so automatic updating of everything. This, when you come down to it, has to improve your overall security posture. You now have a better chance of having a fully functional, uh, fully um, operating firewall you protecting every place on your network, every endpoint, every user, uh, every um, IDF, every MDF, anything your your network is composed of can be protected, and it's all under central control. Not only is it under central control, but it's also under central management, right? So so think about that and central monitoring. Um, you can see everything. You know, suddenly from this one central cloud-based console, you can see how every firewall is doing, what's happening on every firewall. You can inspect the traffic on every firewall. Um, you've got tremendous capabilities. You always had them before, but it was case by case, box by box, firewall by firewall. Now it's all centralized for you, all concentrated to make it far easier for you to continue to improve your overall security posture again and again and again. Now, include, you know, it's improving your security posture has another effect, and that is that it creates high availability. Only in this case, that high availability is affordable. You're not making major investments simply to preserve high availability. You're protecting all of your assets, thereby reducing the number of outages you have or even anomalies that you have. And your network is working better, creating the kind of high availability you've always wanted. And so that also is something that cloud firewalls give you by nature. They are disarmingly easy to deploy. For those of you who have ever gone out in the field to install a firewall, it, you don't do that anymore. You just don't do it. Uh, you don't deploy a cloud firewall yourself. It's deployed for you from the cloud. There are some adjustments that have to be made locally, which is you know, par for the course. But in general, it's quick and easy. Uh, and so when the decision is made that everybody's going to have a cloud firewall, everybody having that cloud firewall ensues pretty quickly thereafter. Um, and so easy deployment is a huge, huge benefit that you're going to enjoy when you move to cloud firewalls. IAM is a big concern for all of us. Uh, you don't want unauthorized people accessing your network especially when everybody is accessing remotely, coming in through the internet, you don't want somebody who's not supposed to be there finding their way through. 
you want to make sure you can stop them. Well, here again, centralized control, centralized uh, authorization and authentication, uh, all under your specific control. One of the challenges that has been posed to me in questions before has been about the initial move. Uh, nowadays, if we're moving users from the office out to home like everybody else, or if we do have hybrid users going back and forth, how difficult it is, is it to migrate them? It's not. Of course, we did it. We did millions of users in a day. So we've proven that it's not. But most IT managers will acknowledge to you that when we did it that fast, none of us could assure adequate security. Forget superior security, even adequate security. We rushed. No question we rushed. And so now when we're moving people out, we want to make sure we do so safely. We want to make sure that we move them out with everything under control. And of course, a cloud firewall facilitates that makes it easy for us to provide truly substantial security, even when we're migrating people from one place to another. So another benefit of cloud firewalls is protection during migration. And then finally, because there's no more room on the slide, um, what you're getting in the overall, the big Benny, the big benefit of moving to a cloud firewall is that not only do you enhance your remote security and actually your core security, not only do you enhance all your security, but you also enhance your ability to manage performance because you can see so much more and you have so much more centralized control than you've ever had before. Um, Cloud Firewall will deliver benefits way beyond security for a good long time to come. And that's why I say that you know, whether you have people still in the office, people working from home, people bouncing back and forth, people traveling the world, wherever they are, a cloud firewall gives you the ability, think of it that way, it gives you the ability to make sure that everybody is well protected. Hopefully this has been informative and helpful to you. Uh, right now, I'd like to turn back to my friend, John, uh, and uh, see if there have been any questions. You bet, Howard. We do have some questions. I want to remind everyone that you can type your questions into the Q&A box at any time. We'll do our best to get to all of them. Let's start with this question from uh, Shauna, who's wondering, Howard, can a cloud firewall protect data on premises? Yes. Yes. Um, it, it, I, it would be kind of clunky to have a whole other um, a security uh, schema for your uh, on-prem. So yes, you can you, you can extend your cloud firewall to everything that's in on your premises. Okay. Here's one from Colin is wondering, is the cloud firewall provided by the cloud provider as uh, a SaaS offering? It can be. That is one of the delivery methods Gartner specified, for example. Uh, it is also something you can implement yourself um, mm -hmm. and you can control. Uh, it may be that you don't like Amazon's cloud firewall or Google's cloud or Azure's cloud firewall. You may prefer one of your own. Uh, I can think of some people who would agree with you. Uh, we may be hearing from some of them soon. Um, so uh, <laughs> yeah, you absolutely have that choice, but it's always delivered as SaaS. It's always delivered from mm -hmm. the cloud. Okay. Um, this attendee is wondering, is um, is this uh, SASE, SASE, Secure Access Service Edge, or Zero Trust? And the answer is kind of yes for both and kind of no for both. Um, every time I see SASE, I think of self-addressed stamped envelope. And that's just because I'm a writer. <laughs> you know, we always have to include one of those to send stuff back to us. But Secure Access, Service Edge, and Zero Trust are strategies. They're both strategies. And indeed, um, 
firewall as a service, FWAAS, or next generation firewall, NGFW, um, they're all, those are all cloud firewalls. And they are all components of both uh, secure access service edge strategy, as well as the zero trust strategy. So they're in there for sure. Okay. Neil is wondering, how does the licensing work? How does the licensing work? And honestly, uh, that's not a question I can answer, but I suspect mm -hmm. that Meet, who follows me in this presentation today, can give you a very thorough answer on that. Um, so I would, I would recommend you wait for him. Okay, we'll get to him momentarily because we only have uh, time for one more question. Uh, Howard, does having cloud firewall uh, eliminate the need for an actual firewall? <laughs> Oh, gosh. Uh, cloud firewall is an actual firewall. Um, it has, well, this is kind of like private cloud, right? Uh, right? Private cloud doesn't necessarily have to be remote. It doesn't have to be in somebody else's data center. You could build a private cloud in your own premises. It just has to adhere to the rules set out in uh, NIST's definition of cloud computing and uh, have all of those capabilities. Uh, then it is, by description, a, by definition, a cloud fire, uh, I'm sorry, a, uh, a private cloud. The same is true for a, a cloud firewall. If it performs all the required functions of a firewall, it's a cloud firewall. If uh, an appliance performs all the functions required of a firewall, it's a firewall. So they're both actual firewalls, but it is likely that you can, when your fire, when your hardware firewall reaches into life, you can get rid of it and just use the cloud firewall. Oh, look, okay, John. Um, we, yeah, our buddy. Hey, Lynn, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> our frequent flyer, Lynn, has, uh, has chimed in with a good question. They're always good, so I, I, I want to be sure to get this. How do cloud firewalls enhance the overall security posture of organizations that rely on cloud services and infrastructure? Right, okay, great question, Lynn. Um, I guess the best way to explain this is that people think that all cloud providers provide excellent security. And by and large, they're right. I mean, you think about how much Amazon or Microsoft or Google can invest in security. It's a lot more than you can or I can. So there's every good reason to think that. That being the case, then why do you need to bother with security? And the answer is that there is there's many miles of connection between you and those cloud data centers. Now, many, many strategists put some of their own protection between the cloud fire, the cloud data center and the rest of the world. But predominantly when you're securing using a cloud firewall or a hardware firewall, what you're securing is usually your endpoints that you use to access those cloud resources. You spend a lot more time and effort and money securing that and it doesn't really matter if your servers are in your data center or somebody else's data center. Um, it works exactly the same way. Okay, Howard, thank you so much. That's all the time we have for uh, questions for Howard.